Welcome back to the Union Campaign on Major General Difficulty in version 1.28.4, the JMP mod. When we last left our heroes, they had just successfully survived the Battle of Shiloh, and they are now about to assault the hill at Secure River to kick off the Peninsula Campaign. But before we start foolishly attacking uphill, in the open, in broad daylight, let me pause and say, Thank you for taking the time to check out any of my materials related to the game. I hope that you find something to help you achieve success in your own campaigns. Be aware that Colonel, Brigadier General, and Major General difficulties all share an AI profile. Legendary has its own profile. Therefore, things that you see me do should easily translate to lower difficulties, but may not work in Legendary or be suboptimal. Coming out of the victory at Shiloh, I put two career points into training to get that started, and one point into recon. I bought the 20 pound parrots with five reputation points. I then went through the barracks and reassigned any previously wounded officers. If a healed officer had fewer battles led than their replacement, then the replacement permanently took over the unit. The AI received a full core and a veteran reinforcement, giving it 40 to 45% training and 29 to 34% armory. The three side battles before Gaines's Mill are Secure River, Rendezvous, and Seven Pines. Seven Pines does not scale. You can add as many troops as you want and always face the same AI force. Rendezvous is a little bit deceptive because many of the AI units will lay back in the far woods and may not engage the player at all. Plus, the AI only has infantry and skirmishers here. All the units are split, so scaling doesn't have a big effect on Rendezvous. On the other hand, Secure River is very sensitive to scaling and can be significant. If you immediately start rebuilding your entire army after Shiloh without paying attention, the AI can have some huge units at this battle. Coming out of Shiloh, you are already over the minimum scaling for Secure River. Without doing anything, if I go to the deploy screen, I'm facing 18,326 troops and 56 guns. If I disband my entire army, the AI force drops to 11,791 and 30 guns. Even if I build 14 minimum sized units, the scaling is already back over 14,000. I won't be disbanding my army, but I wanted to show how sensitive Secure River is to scaling. You likely built a bunch of rookie units for Shiloh, so if you find that you struggle with Secure River, it may be beneficial to disband some of those units that only fought at Shiloh. The way that I chose to handle things is to select the 6 infantry, 6 artillery, and two skirmishers that I want to take to Secure River. I then used up my vet pool, getting them back to the size that I wanted. Then, I selectively disbanded skirmisher units with only one battle, since their stats are better than my new recruits, and I used them to continue topping off my units. If you look at my second core, I didn't add any troops to any of these units, I also didn't disband any of the small artillery or cav units because they help drive down the scaling of the AI guns and cav that will come to the battle. Other than the cav, I gave all of these units my lowest quality weapons so I could give my best weapons to the units deploying. I increased Woods, Scales, and Walton to 12 guns. I upgraded Loomis to 20 pound parrots. I used Vets and General Hunt to get this James rifle battery up to a shell shot perk. Brewster and Sherman bumped up to 1400 and I gave Sherman Mississippis. I gave Peabody 12 ordnance rifles with a shell shot perk. Brooks and Wagner went to 1,400 men, and I gave Brooks the 55 Springfields. I hired Erasmus Keys and gave him one of my skirmisher units to get a stealth spotting and accuracy perk, and he has the 53 Enfields. Franklin was given 1,400 men. Lepian was killed at Shiloh, so Braxton took over that unit, and I gave him 55 Springfields. 
Grimes was given the 59 Sharps rifles. I increased him to 442 because that's how many rifles I had to give him. I also put my four best officers in as division commanders, and that includes Grant and Gibbon. According to the core deploy screen, we will be attacking 20,324 soldiers and 56 guns with our 11,437 troops and 67 guns. Uphill, out in the open, in broad daylight. Whoever gave this mission was an absolute genius and a mastermind. I mean, the ability to infiltrate the Union Army and take charge to issue suicide orders to the Federals. Only a genius could pull that off, because any competent commander would go around the hill and approach from a different direction. Secure River is one of the battles that hasn't changed much. The strategy that I use here is the one that I used in version 1.27 of the mod. I want to show the AI my location and have it attack me right in the teeth of my smooth bores and the supporting gunboat fire while my infantry fire at will. While that is happening, my rifled artillery will start counter battery operations on the AI's guns to soften things up before I begin my assault. Once the AI infantry has taken some losses, I'll move up from the south and push the AI north. This will not be a full clear of the battlefield. If you want to go for a full clear, I suggest you bring much more infantry and start your assault earlier. Be sure not to take the VP too early because the battle ends when the contested timer runs out. You'll take more casualties playing it that way, but you'll get the full clear. If you're fighting the battles chronologically, the AI will not default to using better weapons like Lorenz rifles until the next battle, although you could see them if a unit rolls a variance for weapons quality. You'll need to decide if taking more casualties to get the full clear is worth the cost. If the AI army size is in yellow in the intelligence report, or you have certain units that you want to get more experience, then maybe it's worth it going for the full clear here. Trying to find the best place to put everyone without causing unwanted shifting of guns and men can be a little bit tricky. We have a ton of time in this battle, so there's no need to press. The AI units here are bigger than average because they have so few of them unless they get a split.
Sherman and the two detached skirmishers don't have a lot of support on the top, so I need to monitor how much attention they get. But Sherman can get in great supporting shots if I can get the AI to focus on my dedicated skirmishers. My rifled artillery will mainly handle counter battery operations, but can switch to repelling charges. Not counting splits, the AI only has five infantry units, supported by two dedicated skirmishers and two artillery batteries. So capturing or shattering any of its infantry units will quickly weaken its forces. Here we go, the AI finally got tired of getting flanked and is charging. It does help when it charges units further away to allow for more flanking while it crosses in front of my units. It appears that it has at least two split infantry brigades. I need Wagner to charge just enough to rout him. With four heroic units of over 2,000 men at the top of the hill, he might be able to overrun me here if they all come at once.
Here comes Pond. little charge with Braxton. I don't want my artillery killing my own guys and Pond is routing, so I'll give them new targets. He still has three untouched infantry units. I'd like to get all of them down here to take some damage. Perfect timing on that one. Now I need to get ready for Glad. I thought Gladden might change his mind for a minute, but here he comes.
Gladden is routed. Let's see if Jackson comes in for round two. The CSA is down seven guns from my counter battery hits. With the initial wave of charges over, I just keep whittling away at the infantry as they return for more. I'll start my advance up the hill in about 30 to 45 game minutes. It would be nice if I could take the AI cav out now, but I don't recall the AI using the cav early in this battle like it does with some of the others. It's only coming down because it's interested in my detached skirmishers hanging out here.
CSA is down 10 guns now. I don't care for all that infantry to be on the north side. I need the gun boats to discourage all of them from coming down towards my skirmishers and Sherman. I see eight infantry now. He must have three split brigades.
He still has more artillery on top than I'd prefer, but I'm going to get rolling on my assault. I'll bring my dedicated skirmishers up to support and start moving some of my artillery up too. The AI is trying to get more charges and burning itself out. There are about 18 guns in that battery at the edge of the woods. The first two objectives here are eliminating their artillery battery and dealing with any skirmishers hiding in the woods.
Both skirmishers are over 700 men, but when the AI has fewer units than you, it will always have bigger units, since scaling has fewer buckets to fill to hit the numbers. The number of units in each battle is hard-coded. The JMP mod added the ability to split, which is the only way that the AI can get more units. I'll be in great shape once I can get a foothold in the woods and start getting some cover for my units.
I intend to set up and cover away from the VP and keep damaging AI units when they move up and use up all the time. However, a VP can flip by having more men in the area, so if the AI doesn't press forward, it will cause the VP to go to me whether I'm ready for it or not. The contested timer is only 20 minutes and the battle ends when the timer expires. Chalmers has 42 Springfields. As I said, the AI doesn't default to better weapons until after this battle. So full clearing and captures won't net much quality. Gladden is down to 1,300 men. He's taken a beating. They have our charging. Let me see if I can take them.
Shattered the calf. I don't like charging with my dedicated skirmishers, but they weren't going to outrun the calf anyway. This will be over in a few minutes. I'll do what damage that I can. And that's how I usually play Secure River. I had 369 men killed, 1,065 wounded, and 159 missing for a total of 1,594 casualties. The AI had 11,553 killed and 2,751 captured. Franklin was wounded and Brooks made general. 
I captured some Napoleons and 12-pounders that I'll use. I'll hold on to the 56 Enfields for snipers later, since I can't buy that particular weapon. Thank you so much for spending some of your valuable time watching today. I hope you found something useful for your campaigns, and I wish you much success, Generals.